Hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program 1.6 with Kerbalism. I've had a bit of a gap in my video production recently and that's because I've been sick and you could probably still hear that in my voice though it's been much much worse. I barely was able to get any words out at a certain point. That did not work very well but I'll try and get through this. Uh, I will also try not to kill any more Kerbals though uh, that's that's you know based on a whole bunch of factors and not just my own will. Uh, of course, we killed Jeb, and that was my fault. We killed Clowmond, but I feel a little bit more irritated by that because I feel like I didn't get enough feedback about the CO2 scrubber. I wish it had a warning like, you're passing the point of no return. You know, it has all sorts of other little warnings that pop up, but it didn't say, like, uh, if you don't turn it on now, it's she's gonna die or something, uh, re re you know, because uh, the CO2 re reaching critical levels, by the time it had that pop up, there was nothing I could do, um, so I was irritated by that. Um, it, it's also a point of logic that CO2 scrubbers are designed to be able to filter out like 150% or more of the expected CO2. There is a margin of a, about 50%, that's aerospace standard. Uh, it is not the case that the scrubbers are designed to filter out exactly the output that the Kerbal is expected to have. Um, that's not how that works, and so I was very shocked that the scrubber was not able to filter out uh, the excess carbon dioxide at all. Yeah, that, that all went bad, so we'll try and avoid that this time. We do need a replacement Kerbal, so I've picked up a, a rescue contract. I actually tried to start recording this video before, uh, like right at the beginning of my illness, and uh, that did not work, but I did a few things uh, during that initial recording attempt. Uh, so I picked up this rescue Doman Kerman from uh, orbit around Kerbin so that we get our Kerbinac core back to normal. Um, at least, you know, a minimum of four. And then we also still have the Explorer the Moon contract, plant a flag on the moon, and science stay from the surface of the moon. So otherwise, moon focused. I also picked up a technology, and that is propulsion systems because I love the ant engine. And uh, we also have the Oscar B fuel tank. Baguette, ever since its introduction, I've wanted to put it to use. As it says, it is fashionable. And so uh, <laughs> I actually won a modern art design prize. So, yeah, I believe it. So I want to put it to use because we believe in being fashionable. And there's a spark engine as well. So this is just a great technology overall. Um, yeah, and we'll see it in action. Okay, so this was my design for a rescue mission using the baguette tanks and the new ant engine when I tried to record this about a week ago. Uh, but I read a comment in the YouTube comments uh, from Kiri Kip that was somewhat helpful. First of all, uh, apparently we only need the CO2 tanks if we're going to be uh, using something that consumes CO2 to convert it to something else. So we don't need these. Um, apparently we only need the humidity control when we get out to Minmus, so I don't have to worry about that. Uh, so right now, whoop, come on, come on game. Okay, well, right now we have no humidity, uh, we, we've got good for everything else. Um, so, and radiation shielding isn't that important until we get to station building. I hope that's true. Um, and uh, Gary Kip said that I should use fuel cells uh, to quote, they are what the Apollo program used and will help a lot. I know that they were what the Gemini and Apollo program used. Um, I'm not entirely sure why they would help a lot. That's the question I would like answered. Uh, why should I use fuel cells when I have solar panels and assuming enough electric charge to cover the dark side of the planet? Um, maybe, maybe there's some reason I don't know. Of course, if uh, we don't have enough uh, electric charge storage to cover the dark side of the planet, that's a different story. But um, yeah, so that's another thing. It's not really efficient to use the baguettes like this, to be honest, especially since I've got them only half full. And uh, if we take a look at the Delta V readings, uh, 970 meters per second is what we got there. The trick is that the burn time is like more than 13 minutes. So actually almost 14 minutes. So that's that's why they're underfueled, and it might be like not the best thing to do. I also feel like the delta V down here is not really enough, especially considering the thrust weight ratio here. Well, that says 1.67, but it's uh, 1.3 sea level, and then uh, here it's only 1.28. So 
you know, with a better thrust weight ratio, you can get away with less uh, delta V to get into orbit. But we're not really in that situation. So I want to put the booster that we had on the previous rescue mission back on too. So, uh, hammer. Uh, ironically, this is more expensive than the previous rescue mission, but um, maybe it'll have more capabilities later on. And I wanted to uh, use the baguettes and the ant engine anyway. This sort of looks like a lifeboat, except it doesn't need to because that's all going to get dumped off when it actually splashes in the water. It'd be a different story if we were keeping them on. Anyway, we don't need Valentina in. And let's try and uh, get our new Kerbal, hoping that the new Kerbal is a pilot. Okay, everything seems good. SAS on. Um, there's Doman's wreckage. Uh, it's a bit ahead of us, unfortunately. Not the best rendezvous situation. I want the engine here to stage at the same time as the decoupling. Okay, throttle up and all right ignition we will want to go pretty steeply so that uh, if necessary the ant engine can complete orbit but it's got that long burn time okay going through the speed of sound here Okay, looking good, but I need Apoapsis data. I think we'll probably make it into orbit on this engine. Well, I might want to just dump it though. We're going higher than the target because the target's pretty low already. And, well, I guess we'll give the rest of it a go. And separation. So, here we are. Let's make sure we're temporarily oriented towards the sun. There we go. Okay, so we've got tangency there. 0.2 degree inclination difference. I wonder why there's depletion of nitrogen. Okay, we have a close approach there. Oh no, that's Chapman's. Oh wait, oh both of the, oh and not Chapman, the Clowman's debris. Our previous rescue Kerbal debris is right there, and a uh, Doman. I for a little bit there, I thought I had uh, targeted the wrong wreck, uh, but no, Doman is right there. It just so happens they were passing by both of them at the same time. So it's a small world in uh, Kerbin orbit. It's a small world. We found Doman Kerman. He's still alive. Good. And I've been told that this no more food, no more water thing is just to be expected when loading craft. Crew is allowed music again. Double snack rations. Yeah, might as well eat everything on board at this point. Alright, that should be close enough. Okay, we're drifting away. Dom Domin is a scientist. With a mustache and goatee. Interesting, like a steampunk scientist. And board. Alright. Looking good. Very stylish. Very stylish facial hair. And uh, looks at the KSCs in daylight. We'll try and deorbit close to it. Alright. Uh, 26 kilometers seems fine. I probably wanted that periapsis a little bit closer over here, but okay. Um, but we are already fairly low, so the fact that it's out here probably... I don't know, whatever. Let's see. We should probably ditch the service module now. We hardly used any of the fuel, to be honest. We still got 745 meters per second left. Here it goes. I got a comment uh, saying that all my craft have inverted control from here because they show retrograde as being in the sky as opposed towards as opposed to towards land. Um, that's not 
it, it, retrograde being in the sky is the correct direction. Uh, your velocity vector is towards land. You are going down. <laughs> if, if, if you're going up uh, on re-entry, uh, re -entry, you're doing it wrong. And if you're going up on re-entry, your prograde vector is going to be in the sky and your retrograde vector is going to be towards land. Um, if you're going down, your prograde vector is going to be below the horizon and your retrograde vector is going to be above the horizon. So, yeah, on re-entry, uh, the retrograde vector being above the horizon is correct. There's a little dot there. Is that Minmus rising? I do have distant object enhancements, so it could be anything. Enable names on mouse over. Well, whatever that is, it's not showing me. Oh, I have to apply. Jewel. Jewel rising. I thought it was Minmus. Oh well. I guess spotting Jewel rising over the horizon is more special than seeing Minmus. So we're gonna be splashing down over here. That's no big deal. Alright. Well. I think we should try and send Valentina to the moon, and this time we will not turn off the CO2 scrubber. We're not, uh, we're not in need of sending a scientist to the moon just yet. We need to send a pilot first, I think. Alright, recover vessel. All good, and Doman is at level 1. So let me build the craft to do all the moon things. Land on the moon, have the Kerbal walk on the surface, plant a flag and transmit or recover scientific data from the surface of the moon. I, I mean, we can definitely do all those in a single mission. Question is, is it safe? Okay, so I've got two moon lander designs here. Uh, this is the more conventional one. Well, except that we're using baguettes, but we're still using a spark engine here, which is pretty typical. And of course, lander legs like this. Uh, the food is actually what everything is mounted on here but we've uh, undersupplied and that gives us let's see 34 days of food uh, 38 days of water and we've undersupplied the oxygen so that we have 38 days of oxygen as well uh, really they it's not much mass so we could top it all off but I feel like we should try to be you know uh, efficient about it I've named the rocket that looks like this Suki which is Japanese for the moon. Uh, so, yeah, that is what it's just a moon rocket. Uh, anyway, but uh, same sort of setup that we had before. Really high thrust weight ratio initially, so we can throw all these down. But we do want them for control to be on. And, uh, yeah, um, this is one lander design. And then I came up with something else that actually gives us a little bit more delta V, but you could say it's a little bit more risky. So this is Moon or Landing 3, and in this case, we don't carry lander legs and we land directly on the baguettes. Now, this is less likely to tip over, and as long as the baguettes can bear the load, uh, it's fine. The food and water is on the top here, and we are carrying uh, 34 days of food, 38 water, and 32 oxygen, because we only have one oxygen tank and uh, we're actually counterbalancing it by the instruments. The oxygen tank doesn't weigh very much. Uh, if we take a look here, uh, it's just 0.0027 tons. So, so yeah, uh, easily counterbalanced. And same amount of ablator here, but yeah, again, we're just landing directly on these tanks. And so that's a little bit riskier except that it's better off on the Delta V. So it's riskier as far as you know, is landing on baguettes a good thing? Uh, but it is better in terms of delta V. So it's depending on how you look at it. I don't want to tip over. I think, I think this is good because we won't tip over like this. I feel like that's the priority. Ooh, uh, we do have the wobbles. Oh, it's sideways. Uh, hmm. Okay, no, it's straight up now. Uh, it's sideways again. Oh boy. Uh, I've done something horribly wrong. I feel. This, I, I remember launching this in the previous episode and it did not go this way.
Oh wow. Uh, okay, no, no, this is this is a bug. This is a bug, right? It can't be this way. Oh, no. It's fine. I mean, launch clamps are nice and all. We should probably have those. I feel like I should restart the game too. All right, recover. So right, do we have launch clamps? We don't have launch clamps, if you were wondering, so... Uh, yeah... Mm, but I remember launching this fine, so what the, what gives now? Maybe if we sit... Uh, you know what, let me restart the game and see. Okay, well, let's try it again. I probably should, like, get the abort action group ready or something, but, um... We'll, we'll see. Okay, um, it's, it's wiggly. Uh, yeah, it's very wiggly. Um, let's see. Uh, let me, let me, oh, yeah, that's not good. Sorry, I don't have the camera set properly. Um, uh, uh, was it like this before? Was this always like this? I didn't think so. But maybe I was incorrect about that. This. I feel like there's something fundamentally wrong about this right now. Not you. Uh, so, struts. We need struts. I don't really know if it's a good idea to proceed with the mission at this point, but... Well, we're here now. Okay, that's the end of that wobbly stage. So let's do an evaluation. We're probably gonna need about 800 more to make orbit, and then uh, maybe, let's say, 900 to transfer over. Uh, and then 300 to make orbit around the moon, so that gets done with this stage. And then, if we can land with about 800 meters per second, and then take off again with 800 meters per second, we could get home. But it's pretty tight. Well, we'll give it a go and see how far we get. It occurs to me I didn't pack any mar propellant. So, Valentina can't use her jetpack. I don't think I did that burn the way I wanted to. Okay, turning to the node. Well, really just prograde. We seem to be going very fast to it, darn it. I feel like I'm doing everything wrong. Okay, we've got a low periapsis. Let's see how much it takes to get into orbit. It's taking way too much to get into orbit. I'm, I got a fast transfer instead of what I wanted. We'll get into orbit, but we're going to come right back. We need to fix our wiggly rocket. So we're, we're going to try and get some extra science, maybe. I don't want to have Valentina pop out, though. Because she's got not uh, not got any mod propellant. Well, that's a pretty good orbit, uh, 63 by 59. I doubt there's any new science to do. Oh wait, I was wrong. Pressure scan. We're we're gonna try and get struts here. And that's our goal. So the pressure scan was new. In space high over the moon, we hadn't done it before. Did we ever do a crew report? Um, need to take a uh, time warp. No, we had not done a crew report near the moon. Keep that. How about a crew report high over the moon? Uh, that we have done. Okay, so we could get a science that's worth about 45. 
45 data or whatever you want to call it. Let me just check. Let's go to the Space Center. Suddenly the music plays. All right, yeah, uh, if we get that science back, we'll get struts, we'll get uh, launch clamps, and that should help, hopefully. Okay, time to come home. Okay, that should do the trick on the periapsis. Let's go. Oh, that's, uh, well, it looks like a lot of ocean, but that's because it's not rendering the land properly, I don't think. I don't think there's any Pacific-like ocean on Kerbin. Just want to avoid mountains now. Heating has already started. Let me turn a little bit better retrograde there. All right, we are through re-entry heating. We have plenty of ablator, as usual. The margin is good. I suppose we've done... No, we have not done crew report flying over Kerbin's waters. See, you never know. Okay, parachute. Ah, pressure scan has not been done before. And splash down, recover vessel before anything weird happens. Alright, 41 science. We seem to have a little piece from one of the other missions hanging out right here. Um, no, I don't want to fly it. Uh, recover. Well, it didn't give me anything. All right, let's get struts. I have learned my lesson. Struts are important. Okay, so I have added auto strutting. And if we take a look here, I'll strut heaviest part there uh, to root part at that interstage. And also at the bottom on the boosters, we have to heaviest part. Uh, will it all be enough? I do not know but it's a start. I also added actual struts to the boosters, so we'll see. Um, we'll, we'll find out immediately on the launch pad, of course, and of course we've got launch clamps now. Uh, I think Valentia should get another try at this. Well, it's nighttime, but I'm not gonna mess with that right now. Oh, I did want to put some monopropellant in for Valentina. Hold on, let's recover this. All right, SAS on, throttle is up. I wonder where we are lacking... Oh, in these tanks that are sort of clipped in, we are lacking some liquid fuel and oxidizer. That makes sense. Okay. All right. Here we go. And we're going to throttle down carefully. Auto strutting is clearly doing its thing. And separation. Oh, no, 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 no. Ah, oh, uh, shucks. back around okay I need fins on this still it's disturbing but it's true well at this point I can shut down this engine that'll give us better efficiency interesting sound okay separation and ignition Oh, oh, things are going a little bit wacky. And, well, just a little burn at Apoapsis. Let's see, where's the moon now? And we want to make sure we're taking it slow this time. Unlike last time. That's good. One day, one hour. We shouldn't uh, arrive with too much excess velocity like that. Okay, ignition. I like that. Uh, about 48 kilometers. That looks good. All right. Sunlight awareness. Um, I'd rather have this other panel on the job. There we go. Well, we have the expected amount of food, water, oxygen, and way more nitrogen than we need. Though, it does have that weird leak where even when... When nobody's on board, it loses nitrogen. Not that it should lose nitrogen when people are on board. We don't absorb the nitrogen. Retro burn. Um, you know, we're gonna want to land over here anyway. 
I guess we can just proceed. We certainly have the dealt weight. Saying not a number of meters per second? What the heck? What do you mean not a n number of meters per second, huh? Here I thought we were all cool with each other, Kerbal. What is this? Mm, okay, sometimes it wants to tell me. See, briefly it tells me how much there is, but then it goes to not a number. Hmm. Is it gonna try and mess with me? Anyway, um, a landing over here doesn't seem like a bad idea, huh? Gotta remember this moon is bumpier. Oh, we might want to tilt up a bit. Uh, bumpier than the RSS moon. This would have been an awesome time to have some more displays like MechJab or Kerbal Engineer, but we'll do it the old-fashioned way. It seems like this stage would be enough for all but the final bit of descent. 52 seconds, huh? Uh, I can't make a maneuver there. Mm, there we go. So if I want to land there-ish, we'll start burning at about 52 seconds before we get there. Uh, maybe we should try and land right about there. Let's burn. I don't know, this doesn't look too bumpy, right? Okay, it's time to just dump this stage, so let's bring ourselves basically to a halt. Kill all the horizontal velocity. I don't know, it seems pretty slow. Well, let's just avoid that edge right there. I can see a shadow. Okay, turn, dump. Okay, ignition, burn. Well, let's make sure that the baguettes don't bear too much impact. Whoop, whoop, don't go away. Whoop, whoop. Okay, there we go. We have landed on our baguettes. I just like the idea of that. All right. Crew report. Keep. Pressure. Keep. Temperature. Keep. And radiation. Keep. All right. EVA time. She seems to be chattering for some reason. Hmm. Okay. Um, do not remove helmet. Uh, EV report. Keep. And plant a flag. Okay. Val on the moon. Finally made it. That's good enough for me. Whoa, 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 Val, 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 don't scare me like that. The board, board. Oh, sometimes. Um, I, I, I didn't see a option for surface sample. I think I have to upgrade something for that. Don't worry, we'll we'll get it when we come back. And we will come back. Uh, for now, I think we've done enough, right? We've done what they asked us to do. Actually, you know, if we transmit something, we will have fulfilled all the contracts, even if we don't bring Val back. But let's focus on just bringing Val back at this point. Okay. SAS on. Everything seems to be a go. And up we go. Okay, so in theory, the rest of this should be a breeze, right? I mean, we've already brought Val back from orbit around the moon once. We actually have a lot of Delta V. If you wanted to make a hop and land somewhere else on the moon, we could. <laughs> this trench seems very tempting, but you know what? 
Uh, I want to keep it simple for this first time. I really want to bring Val back. Really, I think uh, next up we should look into adapting this system for Minmus Landing. Obviously, we'll need a few extra things. Okay, that should be a good return. Let's try that. Alright, we are on our way back. Okay, ditching the service module. Pod. Don't be like that pod. I swear it should be properly covered, even if we tilt a little bit away from retrograde, I don't get it. Real space missions do all sorts of fancy stuff. Is that something Kerbalism changes? Does it make the, pat, uh, the pod more susceptible or something? Hmm. Well, I mean, we hardly used any supplies, but... Probably best that we carried them. Valentina can munch on the remainder while she's in quarantine. I'm sure... The medical community will want her to keep the same diet they usually do. At least for Skylab they did. I don't know about the moon missions. Where I think they, they had all sorts of cake and nice stuff in quarantine on the moon missions. Alright, splash down and recover vessel. Alright, 120, uh, 121.8 science earned. Yep. And uh, we got some funds back there. Though we landed as far away from the KSC as we could. Um, Valentina got two experience but no new rank. And yeah, so we've fulfilled our contracts. We should probably upgrade the R&D building now. Is that what gives us... Uh, yeah, that's the surface samples. So we upgrade that, we can do surface samples. Let's do that. And I'll look into what sciences we unlock in the next episode. We also need to pick up new contracts since we've done all our contracts. This is another Explore the Moon one, but that's to rendezvous two vessels in orbit of the moon. So maybe that's the thing, but I really wish it would give me something. Well, there's Science Day from Space around Minmus. Okay, I'm definitely going to take that. And that'll start us on the whole Minmus business. But yeah, so hopefully my voice will continue to get better. But for now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.